Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in this video, we're going to show you how to create your Blazor Web WebAssembly application using Okta Authentication. So first thing, we're going to create the Blazor Web WebAssembly in Visual Studio. For that, we're just going to create a new project and we're going to select Blazor Web WebAssembly app and we're going to name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it Okta Blazor and we're going to click next. Here I'm just using .NET 5. I'm using the latest. Authentication type, we're going to do individual accounts. And then I'm going to do a, a ASP.NET Core hosted because I want to have a, a backend. And then we're going to click create. While that is being created, we're going to go ahead in, into our Okta admin page and we're going to do create new app. And here we're going to select open ID connect. We're going to click single page application. We're going to click next. And here you're going to call it whatever you want. We're going to call it a blazer app. Here you would add your logo and everything. In this case, we're just gonna create it later. And here you have to add the signing redirect to arise. That one, we're gonna wait a little bit to see what uh, Visual Studio is giving us and we'll do it based on that. So now we're gonna go to Visual Studio. I like running the project first to make sure it runs. So here we can see it's running and we can steal what port we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna copy this, close this, go back to Okta. And we're gonna do, we're gonna change that to to this one. And we actually have to change the login callback, the the one for Blazor, the auto, the automatic one is actually authentication slash login slash callback. And we're gonna do the sign out URL. It's gonna be the same, but we're gonna change login to log out. And then for trusted origins, you can add them, but at first we're just doing local host, so we're not going to add it. We can add that later. And then we're going to do anybody in our, in, in our organization can access it. We're going to click save. And we're going to use the client ID and Okta domain later. But for now, we're just going to go back to our application and we're going to do some code changes. All these code changes are actually available in my GitHub in the blazer dash octa you can go through and kind of like guide you through that's what i'm going to do in this video so we're going to start first with our program.cs i just like kind of uh, making this into a new line just to make it cleaner so you can actually see it and same with this one we're just going to make it a new line it's not really required but you'll see in my code that i did that so you you can see why i did that and then we're going to add the following code that basically is adding open id connect authentication we're going to pass a string that we're going to get from the configuration that it's going to be the octa authority and the other one is going to be the octa client id and then we're going to pass a response type of code now we don't have an applications app settings of json created already we're going to create one in our ww root so we're going to go ahead and click add new item and here you can find the json one and we're just going to name it app settings of json and i'm just going to copy it from my github and it's, as you can see here it's asking for the octa url and the client id so we're going to go back to octa and we're going to copy the octa domain and we're going to paste it here and then we're going to copy the client ID and we're going to paste it here. So what, once we have that, we can go to the server and in areas, identity pages shared, we can go to this partial and this is going to come later, but th these two are used when we have like the local identity server, we're not going to use that. So we're going to delete that and we're going to change this to just to if the user is null we're gonna if, if the user is null we assume that they're authenticated and then everything else stays the same and then just to keep our application clean we're gonna delete anything under the data which is basically our database for our users uh, we are not going to use that because we are using octa as our identity provider so we're just going to go ahead and delete this all together And we're going to do the same for this model. 
this is a user model. We don't need it, so we're just going to delete it. And then for the server, we have to add a NuGet package for Okta. So in here, we're just going to do octa.asp.net core, and it's the first one. Once this is installed, we can go here, and the, since we deleted the data in the models, those namespaces don't exist, so we have to delete those. And we have to add this following two, which are the OpenID Connect one and the octa.asp.net core. And as you can see, all of this stuff, it was for the database and the identity usage. We're not using any of that. And we're not gonna use the server.jwt, so we're gonna delete all that. And instead, we're gonna add our Okta authentication. So here we're adding authentication, and then we're using all Okta defaults API authentication scheme for all three, and then we're doing add Okta web API. So that's from the Okta Nougat package we installed, and we have to add the Okta domain. And once again, we're gonna add that in our app.settings in the server side, not in the client side. I'm gonna cover that in a second, just before I forget, we also have to delete the identity server from the configure part because we are not using identity server, we're using Okta. So now we're gonna go to the app setting.json and here we're gonna delete the connection string to our database because we're not using the database. And then in here, we're gonna add the Okta domain that is the one we use in the startup. And once again, you have to go to your Okta and copy the domain and copy the placeholder to have the Okta domain there. And that's it, after this should work. So we're, I forgot to remove this one in the login partial. So after this, we should be good to go and we should be able to run it. All right, so now if I log in, it will redirect me to Okta. And here I have to enter my Okta username and password. And as you can see, we're logged in and now I can go into the authenticated fetch data. So that's how you add Okta authentication into your Blazor WebAssembly. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.